Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. It is Sunday, it is time for a review. And since I am kicking off another round of 15 beginner watercolor lessons, I thought we could go ahead and review yet another set that I really like. It's, they're sold separately, but these are Paul Rubens art supplies. This is a watercolor set and here we have the 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper. I, uh, the last round of 15 watercolor lessons, I recommended Winsor Newton Cotman paints, which are still really, really great. But if you didn't want to spend that and wanted something a little different, these are one of my favorites. So let's open them up, let's get to it, and let's see why I like these so much. Are you ready? Here we go. I first found Paul Rubens through their uh, iridescent watercolors and I was so impressed and then I uh, realized that they had this set here and I've always wanted to try it. Uh, they are artist grade. They do have light fastness ratings. I have not tested them myself, but what I do know is that just from my experience, I feel like they're really quality goods. So let's open them up and let's take a look at them. And I'll talk about this paper here too in just a minute. So they come in a really nice box. This box is thick. You can reuse it to keep pencils in, little trays. And it always comes with this little rag for your brushes, which I really like. It's a little chamois. So it has that very nice, good thing to keep in your, uh, in your art kit. So when you're drying off your brushes, rinsing them off, you can blot them with this. And it's washable, totally reusable. So the box, definitely keeper, definitely worth keeping. As is the chamois. And here is the kit, the, the tin. It's pink, and uh, when you open it up, you've got all of these great mixing wells. Let me pull the papers out of here. Whoops, for just a second. You have four mixing wells up top, two, five here, and then this metal part always comes out, and you have more mixing wells under here. So that is nine, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16 mixing wells. And this little device right back here is a finger ring so that you can hold it when you are en plein air and if you, or if you're standing in your studio, and if you needed to set this on the side and just have all this mixing space here, you certainly could do that. Typically when I work, I just keep this right inside. You have enough room, this is wide enough, that if you wanted to, you could fit more pans in here. Let me show you how these work. We'll just take out this second one here. This is a half pan. You could put more in sideways if you needed to. So you could get quite a few more paints in here. This is a set of 24. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a swatch card set up and then we can fill that out and test these paints. Is this crooked or is my table crooked? My, my table is messed up, you guys. That was just my craziness, sorry about that. Uh, at any rate, let's see here. We've got quite a few colors in here and I'm excited to get these open and tested with you guys. So let me set this aside. We'll get everything set up and we will get this going. The, um, the brochure, the literature that comes with this set gives you all of the colors that are available through Paul Rubens. And here is a swatch card that they give you. So we can just use this. I do want to, because it'll keep it in there. Um, all of the writing on here is in Chinese, but the pigment codes are familiar to me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna swatch them out two ways. This is a 25% cotton paper with, from Fabriano. It's kind of their studio grade. So let's go ahead and uh, set our swatch card up on this. The half pans are held into this palette by those little metal prongs or tabs, and you can just bend that back slightly in order to get it out easily. And then each pan is wrapped in this little uh, plastic coated adhesive paper. And on that paper, you'll find all of the, uh, the number name information. And in this case, it's color A233. That's unique to the company. And the color that they give this is a permanent lemon yellow. It's, it's kind of could also be considered a Hansa yellow light. So let me go ahead. What I like to do is to take these wrappers off and uh, get them all set up here so that I've got that information and I don't have to write it again. So let me do that and then we'll get to swatching. 
I really like that these labels all have the pigment information on them. And a huge surprise, a pleasant surprise, was that a lot of them are single pigments. Some of the names that they have for these, though, are a little bit, um, it feels like they were translated a little bit differently. But that's okay. Uh, I will call them what I'm used to calling them from the pigment information, or I will go back and forth and uh, refer to them by the name on the wrapper. So I do have a website that I consult for pigment information. I've got a couple of them, and I can link to the one that I used for this particular set in uh, in the description below because I think it's really good your light fastness information is only going to be as good as the pigment itself and um, if we can assume that these are actually the pigments used in these paints then I think we can be really sure that uh, the light fastness rating of those pigments will be a good judge like I said a lot of these are single pigments which is really kind of exciting and uh, whenever you're using a single pigment you're going to get a cleaner mix um, of course, it's not to say that multi-pigment paints are not worth your time because they can be a whole lot of fun. But uh, single pigments are a lot of, uh, really tend to be very clear, very easy to mix with. And uh, you can really create vibrant mixes using single pigments. So I was very excited that this set had so many single pigments. In fact, let me tell you how many there are. You know what, honestly, it's easier to tell you which ones are not single pigments. So let's go through the list, and uh, it looks like the entire top row, where the yellow starts there, those are all single pigments. And then when we get down to the bottom row, we don't have a multi-pigment until the second one, and that is Payne's Gray. And they make that with a PB15, a PB29, and a PBK9. And then the yellow-green is a mix of PG36 and PY74. The true green excuse me, tree green is a mix of PG7, PY3, PR101, and PW4. That one has uh, four pigments in it. And finally, we have one of the browns, the one labeled umber. That one is a PR1, excuse me, PR101, plus a Naples yellow, a uh, PY41. So you see a lot of these are single pigments, so I'm excited to see how these swatch out. I'm going to be really honest with you. This is my least favorite paper. I'm trying to use it up. Um, it's a Fabriano Studio paper. It's 25% cotton. This is the cold press. It's really kind of frustrating to use, and I'm not happy with it at all, but I do want to use it up for swatches. So we're just going to whip through this and um, hope for the best. <laughs> I think that the swatches vibrancy come out comes out very well on this paper, and that's just fine. I'm going over the ultramarine again just to see if I can get some granulation, and as it turns out on this particular paper, I'm not seeing a whole lot of granul granulation. Uh, the Prussian blue, which is the one on the bottom left there, that one dries a little bit better than, um, than it goes on. It goes on kind of turquoise, really very similar to the, um, what do they call the sea blue, the one on the top right, kind of like a phthalo blue. But the one on the bottom left there, the Prussian blue, it dries a lot more like Prussian blue. It turns into kind of a denim shade or even close to an indigo. I think for mixing, though, you'd want to play with it just to see what you could come up with. This is the one that they call uh, burned brown. I would liken it to a burned, um, burnt umber. And then finally, the black is uh, coal black, as they call it. But it's also the same pigment as a uh, lamp black, which is very common to include. I'm actually kind of happy they didn't include a Chinese white because even though you can use that to segue your colors into the pastel range, to be honest, when your colors are this transparent and this vibrant, you can just use a thinner wash and end up with a very delicate look. But overall, look at these pigments. They're joyful. I'm very, very pleased. Even though it's on paper that I'm not crazy about, <laughs> I'm very pleased with the vibrancy of these pigments, and I think we won't have any trouble at all with this set. One big plus that I found was that I didn't have to wet the pigments ahead of time. I didn't have to spray the pans at all, and as many of you know, I do live in a very dry climate. I am in Colorado, and we always have dry weather, no matter if it's winter, sun, summer, spring, or fall. So with my dry climate, I was very excited to not have to prep the pans. Since I'm pleased with that, I want to go ahead and use this swatch card that they gave me. I've, I've written my translations of what these colors are in addition to their light fastness on here. And that way I can just keep this folded up and keep it right in the palette. So it is very convenient for that reason. Already, I like this paper better. I don't even know what kind of paper this is. I would assume it's one of the Paul Rubens uh, watercolor papers. Even on just this little bit, the paints are performing so much better. And then finally the lamp black, which is also really nice. So these colors... Are great. Let's take a look at uh, and mixing uh, burnt sienna with the ultramarine, and let's get ourselves a nice gray. 
Do you guys have a go-to mix that you use to test a set? I sure do. Mine is Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, and that's that top swatch there. Um, it's kind of like when I go to a restaurant, I taste their green chili in a Mexican restaurant because that's my barometer for how good the Mexican restaurant is, is how good is their green chili? <laughs> well, this one, I really love that Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna mix. And then I've mixed some of the greens with some Burnt Sienna looking for a little bit of color separation um, when I drop the water droplets in. And it's kind of there. I'm blaming that on the paper though because I have used this set before and it really is quite nice. I love that you've got some uh, beautiful greens to mix with yellows. It's very easy to mix a skin tone. Uh, the bottom there, I mixed uh, one of the the orange, the one that looks like an orange. It is called their, uh, their Indian yellow. I mixed that with the purple, the dioxin purple, and you can get some good skin tones that way. Another great way to mix skin tones is by mixing all three primaries. And these primaries, as you'll see in this color wheel demonstration here, really mix very well. They make nice, clean mixes that you would actually use in a painting. I particularly like the purple that comes out of it. But here we go, we can mix at the bottom the uh, the red, yellow, and blue. And in varying uh, combinations, you can really have a good range of skin tones. Let's paint something. Enough lollygagging around. Let's get to painting. Did you hear that rip? That's the other reason I hate this paper. It hates a strong word. I dislike. I dislike that paper. I do like the hot press version, but not this one. Uh, might be the adhesive. So anyway, uh, on to better things. This is the Paul Rubens paper. The particular pack that I have here is sold in a two pack, or you can buy it singly. If you get a two pack, it's a little bit more economical. And um, just like in yesterday's video today, my neighbors are uh, doing a remodel. So I'm sorry if you can hear the saw going in the background. I, I know that can be irritating, but hopefully it, it's kind of drowned out by my voice. I've got the windows closed, but they're right next to me. And since I work at home, I kind of can't avoid it. So let me fumble with trying to open this here and then we will talk about this paper. The Paul Rubens paper is 100% cotton. And uh, even though it's so affordable, it might not be as nice a quality or a grade of cotton as say something like Arches or a Fabriano 100% cotton paper. I really like the way that this is packaged on a block. I've never had any trouble with this paper at all in general. You can lift very easily. Uh, it's it's just better to use cotton paper and if you're looking for an affordable one I really love this Paul Rubens to use paper that's on a block you just run some kind of a separating tool around the edge I as I mentioned in yesterday's video I prefer to use something plastic you can use just a, a like a picnic knife a plastic utensil or some kind of a, a bone folder this particular leaf attachment that I'm using did come with a different pad of paper that was packaged like a block I think it was bao hung and I continue to use it because it, it works so well. I like the shape of it and it's got the perfect blunt yet sharp edge. Um, I don't like using a metal tool to dig in there and separate it because the metal can scratch the paper that you're, is left on the block and that's the next one you're going to use. This footage here is actually the beginner watercolor lesson that I aired yesterday. So I am going to whip through this really quickly, but I wanna to talk to you about how fun these paints and paper are to use. If you're in the market for an affordable watercolor paper that is 100% cotton, I do recommend this one. I've tried several. I've, uh, I've been kind of on the hunt for this unicorn of an affordable cotton watercolor paper that performs just like the pros. And to be honest with you, this Paul Rubens brand is the only brand I've found that is consistently reliable and uh, really quite good. You can lift. Uh, the paper won't da be damaged when you take the tape off. Um, you can put on a lot of washes. Any kind of technique you're using, wet on wet, uh, or if you're using any kind of dry brush, masking fluid, anything like that, they all work beautifully on this paper. It's available in cold press, which is what I have here. Uh, and you can also get it in hot press and believe it or not, a glitter paper. So if that is something that interests you, especially if you are into making cards and want to add just a little something extra, the glitter paper can be a lot of fun. My go-to is this one, this particular book. It comes in two different sizes. It's a five by seven size, or you can also get one that's like a, a 10 by seven. It's just a little bit smaller than an eight by 10, but what you can do is divide it into two paintings and get two five by sevens out of it. The blocks are wonderful. They have an awful lot of pages to them, and I just think they're such a great buy. You can get them on Amazon. They're very easy to get, and uh, same with the paints. 
The watercolors themselves come in a set of 48, this set of 12, excuse me, this set of 24, and I'm also um, really partial to this uh, set of uh, iridescent watercolors. They're very nice, and I just, I've never had a bad experience with Paul Rubens, so I really hope that it's something that you guys might consider. I don't take these reviews lightly. I look at things and wonder what it would be like for um, someone else to use them if they were the first time to encounter them. And I can wholeheartedly say that the Paul Rubens has my vote, both for the watercolors and for their papers. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this review and I hope it was helpful for you. If you enjoy content like this, please consider giving this video a like. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you would share this video with a friend who you think might be interested in this opinion, I would appreciate that very much. Paul Rubens didn't pay me for any of this. All of these uh, items were purchased with my own money. So I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into Art on the Creek. Enjoy your painting this week, and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye now.